So um, before I start, I have one question for you. How many of you have to regularly present your findings uh, to non-data scientists, non-experts, so business experts? Hands up. Okay, uh, roughly half of the room. How many of you use animated charts to do that? Okay, there are like three people. And uh, why is that? Anybody shouting in some answers? It's an open question. Why don't you use those? It's hard. Yeah, it takes a lot of effort. Or at least, at, to my opinion, but I'm bi absolutely biased here, it has been so far. And uh, well, basically the main message here that I came today is that uh, it shouldn't be that hard anymore. And uh, we're working uh, our asses off actually to, to make it easier for you uh, to use animated charts. And uh, yeah, I I'm just gonna tell uh, how we got here and, and how the technology of Visu looks like right now. So um, without uh, getting into too much detail, there's a, a close friend and now a co-founder of this early stage startup that I'm from. Uh, of mine, uh, Andrew, started a lengthy research a couple of years back. He tried to identify the common characteristics of all charts uh, because he realized that uh, this is the prerequisite of creating something uh, that will, at least to his hopes and mine as well, change how uh, we deal with data, we work with data. And in order to that, do that, he, he like, researched and, and tried to identify how different charts are being used uh, to, to uh, represent the data, uh, what are the characteristics, and these are just some illustrations of his research. And uh, well, he realized if he could make uh, a single engine that can generate all different types of charts, uh, then that would be capable of, uh, of animating between these chart forms, and uh, that can be sort of like a new level in, in data visualization. This is a tiny piece of a huge canvas where he basically experimented with the different ways the animation uh, should happen. And yeah, like uh, fast forward some time forward and, uh, and you'll get to this. So we basically, even though originally everybody told Andrew that this cannot be done, uh, my other co together with my other co-founder, Simon, they managed to, to build a prototype uh, that could uh, do these nice, sleek transformations uh, between different chart types. And uh, that's like the core of, uh, of what we do. So um, what are the benefits of having this? So first, an obvious thing is uh, regarding storytelling. So when you try to tell uh, uh, insights and, and share uh, something about your data, for example, these four charts so show the same data but uh, the connection might not be too obvious, whereas if I use uh, an animated transition, uh, then you know, no more explanation is required. You will uh, simply just look at it, and because you use basically a different type of your brain uh, when you're um, uh, evaluating uh, like a moving element, uh, it becomes natural what's going on here. Uh, there are actually plenty of other facets of, of the benefits here. Uh, we feel like it's, it's really close to turning images into movies, so being able to see the components of a composite index or just uh, drilling down into a, 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 a complex chart and, and see if, if a stack chart or like an element of it goes against the trend, uh, show changes over time, or just basically turn a simple chart into a story uh, that unfolds as, as the animation is being played. Uh, you can zoom in on elements, you can, uh, you can add new elements, and, and for the audience it's going to be super easy to follow along uh, because of uh, the animation is, is keeping the context, actually. That's, that's I think, the, the most important benefit of this. So uh, what we did with this at first, uh, when we only had the prototype and it had a very, like, let's just say, unique type of scripting language that, uh, that our CTO created, uh, we built uh, some stories with it for, uh, for Reddit and other social platforms. I, I'm happy to show you some of those uh, because I promised some entertainment right before launch. So uh, as you could see, they've become quite popular. So this one got over uh, 35,000 upvotes. It's a super, super simple story showing uh, how much a cocoa bean farmer gets from a $1 chocolate bar. And uh, as you can see, I mean, the, the, uh, the basic uh, insight here 
could be shown in plenty of different chart types. It's, it's super easy. The, the animation here uh, builds a narrative, creates tension. We, we wait, we, we still have to wait until uh, the share of the farmer appears and uh, it, it brings it to more context. I think it could have been even more popular, but uh, because of the ad we placed there, uh, Reddit admins uh, took it down after a while, even, even after uh, 37,000 upvotes. Or um, this is also a, a pretty simple one uh, where the animation is basically just a way to um, you know, build a story here. It shows the area of the continents and then uh, the share of the population uh, globally. Yes, sorry, the, the quality sometimes uh, trembles. Uh, and then uh, we add the, the share of uh, GDP as the, as the last result. We also created a, an interactive piece uh, out of this one. So as you can see, even though more than 15% of the population lives in Africa, only 3.1% of GDP is being produced over there. And um, yeah, another example, there's one about the, elec uh, the elections, but I'm not gonna show you that one. We all know the results already, so uh, it's been very popular two weeks before the election. Uh, this one is about, uh, especially if it starts, um, let me see. Okay, looks like you have, will have to check it out for yourself. It's about, uh, you, you can find, uh, you just look for Vizu HQ on, uh, on Reddit and you will find all our stories. This is about uh, how much uh, radi radiation uh, the, uh, the Chernobyl liquidators had to endure when they were sent out on the floor, uh, on the roof, uh, to create the radioactive debris, and it shows it in real time. So these were some of the things we created back then, and we also built uh, some interactives. Uh, this one shows the, uh, the, mo the wealthiest Hungarian individuals, uh, and uh, there's like a fun insight I wanted to show you. So um, these are the 20 people back in, in, uh, in, in 2019. And if we go back a couple of years, uh, we can see uh, this. So you could obviously move beyond the years. And this is, so there are two people, um, you should be uh, paying closer attention. Actually, the one uh, right now on top is the former aide of our prime minister and very close friend. And the one right at the bottom, well, he's just the closest friend from uh, secondary school uh, who uh, yeah, had a very specific career, to say the least. So this is when uh, the guys broke up. I mean, I'm just gonna show you the change in, in the value. So as you can see, something has definitely changed over the years, and that's when Mr. Mesaros uh, started to get wealthier and wealthier, uh, as you can see. So if, even if I show you the, the change in percentage, I, I even had to move this button to, uh, downwards uh, so that I have space uh, for the guys, uh, uh, yeah, uh, get, getting actually on top. So he, he's now the, the wealthiest individual uh, in my country. Um, yeah, and uh, this is all nice, right? So it proves that people like animated charts, uh, and, and, uh, and it's easy to get their attention with them, and it's easy to tell stories with them. But uh, we're a startup, uh, we, we have to find a problem, and uh, at this point, we, we had a solution. So when we were looking for a problem, we identified uh, one uh, that, uh, that brought me here. So that, that, is, that is about you, about, uh, about the data scientists. So based on, uh, I mean, this is a really nice, uh, summary from, from Anaconda, the State of Data Science 2021. I really hope the new version is coming out in a couple of weeks. Uh, I don't know, if anybody knows anything about that, just let me know. Basically, I'm not gonna read all those numbers out, but the, the main takeaways here is that it takes a lot of time to build those charts and presentations. It's important. Businesses make crucially important decisions based on those, and company leaders actually struggle to make sense of the presentations and the data that they are being shared. So we thought it might be a good idea to work towards this direction and, and try to help uh, you, the data scientists, uh, basically uh, do a better job in sharing these crucially important insights uh, with the business guys. Um, we built our technology uh, completely open source the core of it, the one that I used uh, when we built uh, all those stories for Reddit, are, is in C++. Uh, we had over, I think, even 40 million views. We had 200,000 upvotes, and we had uh, people who signed up uh, 
because they were interested in what we do. Then with using WebAssembly, uh, we built an open source JavaScript library that we released uh, last September. Uh, we had a plethora of positive feedback. It was even embedded into uh, live products and, and a couple of uh, hundreds of GitHub stars. And then just this March, less than four months ago, we released uh, using a similar technology to what Plotly does, uh, our, our Jupyter integration uh, that where you can use Python uh, to build animated charts. Um, and uh, we, we were able to gather some more uh, GitHub stars with that. Um, we are very focused on, on being able to embed our technology. Uh, we, it's, it's pretty clear that, that these solutions, people used to, to build and look at charts, they are very divergent. There are these notebooks and BI tools and, and everything in a mix. So uh, our focus is to make our thing available in as many platforms as possible. So within three months, uh, we, ma we managed to make it available on all these uh, platforms, even in PyScript that is out there, I think, uh, maybe for two months now. And, uh, and in Mercury, with which you can build uh, interactive web apps, there will be a presentation uh, from Piotr, uh, the person, uh, like the, the central figure building Mercury, uh, tomorrow. You should, uh, I think, come and, 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 and look at his presentation as well. And Mode, uh, which is, uh, which is a, a, a BI tool already. So, yeah, with, with all that story, let's see how, how IPyVisu works, right? So I, I think that's uh, what you're mostly here for. Um, at least I suppose. Okay, so I, I'm gonna give you a couple of examples and also I have some very important announcements to make because basically we were working around the clock in the recent weeks uh, so that we can uh, release some new features that would hopefully make it easier for you to use our tool. But first things first, uh, you can use Pandas uh, here as the first step of this. This is a Jupyter Notebook. I'm just uh, hacking the CSS a bit so that we are going to see the results on the right. Uh, so uh, we're going to read a, a CSV file, add it to a data frame. Uh, this is how the data looks. It's basically some made up sales information from a company that has four regions, north, south, east, and west, uh, four products, shoes, handbags, gloves, and accessories, and some sales and revenue information connected to that. So the way we do the first chart is we set the height and the width, and then uh, we tell, we add the data actually at this point, and then uh, we just tell Visu uh, or IPyVisu, that's the name of the, uh, the, the IPython version, uh, to filter uh, the records based on the product and only include the shoes. And we add uh, the series, so the region to the x-axis, uh, the uh, sales and the product on the y-axis. We add the number of sold products on the label, and, uh, and we're going to color, uh, the, uh, which is going to be apparent in the next step, uh, also based on the product, and we add the title. It's easy as that. And in the second step, I'm just going to modify the filter. Um, yeah, I, I'll try, but I think. Oh, is it is it a little better now? Yeah. Okay, great, great. Thanks for letting me know. So, um, yeah, and uh, in the next step, uh, the only thing I changed is uh, I changed the filter uh, that that I use. So it's going to include shoes and handbags. So I'm going to run this cell, and here you go, shoes appear, animatedly, obviously. Next step, I'm just going to add everything except for accessories, so gloves appear. And then, as a last step, I'm just going to add uh, the last type of product. So basically, this is just a super simple use case, how you can add things one by one. So the next step will be uh, maybe not that easy to follow along, but, uh, but I'm going to tell you in advance. We are going to change uh, from the sales of the product to the revenue. So the only thing we change is we add that to the y-axis and then also to the label. Uh, and obviously there'll be some changes uh, within the uh, ratios here. So as you could see, for example, handbags made a lot, of mo lot more money than uh, their share in the, in the number of, of uh, sold items. Uh, the, the, the sizing uh, should be a little bit corrected. It's because of the zoom level that I'm using here. And as a last step, and here I'm, I'm and as you can see, I'm just calling the animate method over and over and over again uh, to, to make the animation happens. And, and this is the only thing you need to do. I'm going to do it twice in the last step. 
And this is when we are just going to switch the orientation and then just summarize uh, all of uh, the, 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 the revenue data uh, based on the product. In order to do that, we just took down the region from the x-axis in the last step. That's the only thing we did, which is all very nice, at least I hope. I mean, again, I'm totally biased here. Uh, th there are a couple of issues. So one, uh, it has a generic logic. Uh, data scientists, we showed this before, told us that it is really hard to comprehend. So you might not be uh, super clear what kind of chart uh, you will draw as a result if you're just adding series to axes and channels uh, because in every other solution, or at least like 99% of them, uh, you start with a chart type. Right? You, you say that I'm building a scatter plot here, or I'm building a, a stacked uh, column chart here. And um, yeah, that's a fair point. Uh, so one of the reasons uh, my, my CTO didn't have any sleep last night was to release this new feature uh, where we use pre presets, uh, chart presets. I'm going to show that to you in a second. And the other thing is that it only allows here one directional use. So we went through the cells one by one, and if I go back and rerun this cell, uh, then the end result doesn't make so much sense, right? So it changes the chart in a way that, uh, that is not easy to comprehend. We, we just wanted to get back to the previous state. So these were the two issues we identified uh, when, we, when we introduced IPyVisu and when we showed it to some other people. So, but, I mean, as I said, some important announcements to make. We have the presets now. And uh, I'm going to just show it to you in another example. Uh, in the first step, we just use a different uh, data set. Um, and uh, we, I, I just set the style right up here so that the, the remaining of the code will be more simple. Basically, this is the, uh, the amount of revenue uh, the different music formats generated in the US between 1973 and 2020. So like uh, how many? I, obviously, in 1973, they didn't make any money out of DVDs, but uh, later on, that changes, I can tell you that. So, um, yeah, this was the original uh, syntax that we saw. We just put a series to axes and channels, and, and we set the geometry, and we set the alignment this way. But uh, from this point on, we can just say that we are going to build a stream graph just by adding config.stream. And it's going to say that, okay, I want the year on the x-axis, I want the revenue on the y-axis, and I want it to be stacked by the format. And if I run this cell, yeah, it's, uh, oh yeah, this, this styling might be an issue. So this is how the chart looks uh, with the original uh, syntax. And yeah, basically it, it draws the same chart uh, this way. So uh, as you can see, it's a lot uh, shorter, and we really hope it makes more sense to you. Uh, but if not, just let us know. I mean, uh, there are basically two messages that I came with. The first one is that you can build animated charts too easily, and the other is we're here to listen. We really want to make this something that you want to use. Okay, so uh, just to make a story out of this as well, uh, we are going to use some very simple, uh, you can actually combine the two types of syntaxes. So I'm just align, I just switch the alignment to stretch, and then you will see the, the share of these formats uh, just like that uh, uh, after one step. Then if I switch back the alignment to center, we get back to the original stream graph. Uh, we can, there, there's also a nifty little feature when we can split uh, the elements and we can see them side by side. So um, you can obviously see the individual trends and, and as you can see them next to each other, uh, it's easy to tell a story of that. With a, like applying a filter, you can zoom in either on the time frame or, uh, or just uh, some specific uh, formats in this regard. So you can see that vinyl and streaming had quite a, uh, an opposite way of, 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 uh, of generating revenue, but uh, uh, as you can see, Winnail has a comeback in the recent years, so it, it generates more and more revenue. And um, yeah, I'm going to just uh, set the filter to none and, and the split uh, back. So this is how my wife says when the elephants kiss. Um, yeah, that's that. And, uh, and as a last step, again, I have two versions of the same uh, step. This is the original syntax, axes and channels, but I, I just want to make a line chart. 
So I'm going to use config.line. I tell what, what's on the x and the y axis, and I want to tell that it's divided by format. And if I run this cell, uh, you can see uh, the elements right next, like as a line chart, and you can compare the trends uh, much easier. Uh, I, I haven't added in my uh, in this example, but actually we have a tooltip feature. So similarly to to uh, Plotly's uh, charts, you can hover over the chart and and read the values of uh, even uh, for, uh, of data that is not shown on the chart. Uh, okay, so looks like uh, we addressed at least or one of the issues, uh, the generic logic. Uh, the other issue we have is one directional use. So. Before we go to that point, uh, you can find all this in the, in the repository. Just look for Visu HQ or IPy Visu, uh, and you will find a step-by-step -step tutorial and plenty of examples uh, right here. So just if you click on the examples, this is where you'll end up. There are these preset charts that we released last night. And, uh, and like, for example, to make a percentage column chart, uh, you just have to uh, use this. So if you click on any of the thumbnails, you'll get to the code of that specific example. Uh, we, we thought it might be easier for you to, to, you know, just get acquainted with it. We understand that learning a new library is always an investment. We, we hope you will, uh, you know, like it so much that you actually invest your time in it. Uh, but uh, this is how we try to help. Uh, for example, a waterfall chart is also available, and then there are plenty of, uh, and, and it's just like config waterfall, and this is, it, it's like one line of code. Um, and uh, yeah, there are plenty other presets there. Then, the one directional use case. So we added a new package also yesterday called IPyVisu Story. Um, it changes the, uh, the syntax a little bit. It, it, uh, it adds slides and steps. So basically a step is a chart. Uh, the same thing that we built in the previous version with the chart.animate uh, uh, method. Uh, and uh, the slide, it can be just one step, like in this case, or it can be multiple steps uh, let me quickly find one where it's the case. It should be step three, I think. Yeah, so in, in slide three, there are actually two steps. And what you end up with is this. A presentation right from the notebook. Uh, you can use a clicker, you can use your keyboard, you can use your button, the, these buttons in the, in the bottom of it. I just clicked on the full screen to make it full screen. And you can make a fully fledged animated data presentation right from your notebook with this much line of code. So you can go obviously back and forth. This is the step three that had uh, two animation steps within. I'm just getting going backwards. Uh, it's, it's really, you, you can go uh, to the end and then it's gonna, it might fade because of the different steps that, that happen in, the, in between, but uh, yeah, you can just tell the story, stand in front of uh, the audience, and, uh, and you don't have to you know, save your charts as PNG and add it to PowerPoint or things like that, that uh, at least we heard from other data scientists, they uh, tend to use uh, quite often. Um, yeah, I'm, I think I'm still, yeah, I'm pretty much in time, very much. So. Um, yeah, there, there is this, uh, this IPyVisu story repository that you can, uh, that you can find uh, also on GitHub. Uh, we would love you to check it out and, and let us know how you want to use it. And uh, last but not least, so please reach out to us. Please let us know. Uh, and I mean, I'd, I'd be happy to take any questions. Um, if you can drop us a star on the repos, we'd really appreciate that. And there is a, a, an unusual thing I would like you to do uh, that usually uh, I think presenters don't ask you so often. Please pick up your phone <laughs> and, uh, and, and if you can, especially those of you who have to present your findings regularly, if you can go to this URL right now, I mean, and spend the next two minutes in answering some very basic questions about your experience, I would really, really appreciate that. Uh, I, 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 sorry, I don't 
do like uh, Irish tap dancing or anything else to, to keep you entertained while the others are frantically typing in results uh, to, the, uh, to the survey. But uh, I thought I, I would want to use this opportunity. There's one more thing I wanted to do is uh, just to prove the guys back at home that I actually arrived here and, uh, and made this presentation is uh, to make a photo of uh, myself and, and you. In case you don't want to be on the picture, uh, yeah, I mean, just you, you won't be recognizable, I can promise you that, but maybe just turn away. And, and for all the others, uh, I think you just, uh, yeah, just say Vizu, right? One, two, three, Vizu. Yeah, thanks. Um, as you can see, I'm not very experienced <laughs> with this, but I tried my best. Okay, uh, while the others are kindly still filling out the survey, uh, I'm happy to take questions and thank you very much for your attention. And yeah, one really last thing from me, technical, no, two. The first one is there is a, a, like a space, an open space, uh, right the, on the floor in, in, uh, on the top, so on the second floor, and I'll be there uh, for the second half of the lunch time. So if you want to just uh, sit down and take a look at uh, Visu in more detail with me, I'd be, just come join me, I'd be happy to show you anything you, you might be interested in. And the other thing, I have some uh, stickers uh, if you want to show your support or uh, just, uh, you know, show that you know what Visu is, uh, please take some. And yeah, here I am. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely going to use this library. Um, if there are any questions, please come to the front here where the microphone is. Hi. Uh, Hi. Good presentation. Hi. Uh, good Thank question. You. Uh, you mentioned that you're a startup. Yeah. How do you make money? Oh, um, there is actually one backup slide that I prepared with because everybody asked me that. And this is this. So now we are aiming our tools at uh, data scientists, the creator of insights. We want to uh, provide them with a free service. We want to keep it free and open source. And we actually uh, want to enable our tools uh, to be available within BI tools. Uh, the simplest way to say it, companies don't have a notebook budget, but everybody has a BI budget. And already we are working closely with a Dutch company called Infotopics. They build extensions for Tableau, and they managed to embed uh, Visu into Tableau already. So uh, we, we are hoping to, 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 to rip the business guys instead of you, okay? <laughs> um, everything that's being done, is it being done locally on your machine, or is some of it going out to a Visu server? No, nothing goes out to the Visu server. Brilliant talk. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Um, it's not a technical question, more, but more a question of asking advice. Because if I make a presentation for management, often they will want to use it later to present to the board of directors or to have in store to look at later. So what do you recommend? The slideshow is perfect, but I can't really hand them a notebook. Should I export the animations or? Uh, you're addressing a, a crucially important point. Th thanks for that. We, we are working on uh, enabling the, the export of the animation as like video sequence that you can finally embed into PPT. Uh, so <laughs> we, we know that that's going to be a, a killer feature. Uh, uh, but um, um, yeah, so actually we, we, that there is a gap here that we, we also identified. This is why our business strategy is be, to be able to uh, use all this uh, material within the tools that business users use. So we are very focused on that. We, we don't have it yet. Uh, we, we are working on it. Good news. Thanks. I actually had the same question. <laughs> uh, but it's similar, I don't know if you're familiar with Plotly and Boca, they, have, um, they do like HTML exports. So yeah. Be great if you can have that functionality. Thanks. Uh, actually, we we also support that. Uh, I mean, you can just save the uh, notebook as HTML, and then the presentation will be fine. Yeah, I, 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 I'm exporting I, the actual. Um, yeah, just dynamic just the yeah. yeah um, so just the, uh, the the dynamic visualization. Yeah. I, I will have to take a look at that. I have to admit, I'm not the technical guy among the founders, but uh, that's a great idea. That's and great do you think uh, that uh, business users are capable of or would be open to just receive an HTML file from the company server and open it and then play with the presentation? Yeah, 
I, I, in my company, I do the same thing with Boca, mm -hmm. um, and it's actually one of the biggest problems because most people don't want to look at a notebook or mm -hmm. uh, a screenshot, right? Yeah. They want to really uh, showcase the, the dynamic ability of the graph. Mm -hmm. But the, the HTML is fine. Yeah. Okay, good. Thanks. Thanks for, thanks for the feedback. Sure. Uh, thanks for the talk as well. Um, really cool to see how everything is like encoded by axes instead of uh, needing to comply with some standard plots. Um, Thank you. Question on that f for me, is there a way to, you spoke about interactive charts, is there a way to combine multiple charts? So if I like uh, have a bar chart of my top locations or something like that, can I filter another chart based on that and put them together in a dashboard? Um, that more like the later yes. on solution? Yeah, no, 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 you can. Actually, so we created a chart. It was just, uh, as I said, I'm not a technical guy there, but uh, the chart, so uh, as you can see here, uh, we, uh, just a second. So, yeah, we, we create a chart uh, like this, uh, and you can do chart two uh, the same way. So just build a version of it and then, Putting one next to each other, it's it's really like might be just an issue of of using CSS or something like that. So and a, and it can be done within mode, for example, uh, that BI tool. So it's it's a thing that can be done. Uh, I'm I'm gonna make a note for myself to to build an example when this is being used because we we are big believers of this dashboard type of use cases. And yeah, thanks for bringing it up. All right, thank you. Yeah, uh, thanks for the presentation. Um, Thank so, you. does this only work on Jupyter Notebook, or can we use the package in um, Visual Studio? Let's say uh, you can you can use it in Visual Studio uh, with the uh, Jupyter add-on extension of Visual Studio. I, I yeah. do that all the time. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Hello. Uh, Hi. Great talk. Thank you. I have a question. Is there a feature or a plan for one that uh, takes in, say, data from an endpoint or live data? and use the animations to animate the live data as it's coming in? Yes, yes, absolutely. We, we actually already have that in the, in the JavaScript library, and, the, and you, can, uh, you can refresh the data, so you don't necessarily have to add all the data in the initial step. Another great question. Thank you very much, by the way. Uh, with the slideshow, though, uh, you have to add all the data in the first step, and, and you have to use the filtering capability in order to show just uh, like certain parts. But uh, with the simple uh, Jupyter uh, use case, so just by using IPyVisu, you can actually add uh, new data elements, and, and uh, you, you can do basically what you just said, so connect live data into it. But like, do you need to press a refresh or like trigger it, or does it uh, do it automatically? That's, uh, I mean, I think you would need to recall the, the animate method uh, for, for that to, to animate. That's, that's the only thing you should do. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Lo looks like you still have some time before lunch. Uh, or to talk to me about Visu. I I'm just going to head up to the open space and yeah, please feel free to join me there. Okay, thanks a lot, Peter. Round of applause. <laughs>